When CSGO came out in 2012, it was a new game with new weapons, new maps, and new gameplay. But there was another change to it as well that made more of an impact than any of these things did. Because what it did, it hid away the server browser and prioritised a new Valve Run server system instead. There was a time when searching for a game in Counter-Strike involved scrolling down a server list until you found one that you wanted to join. Every single one of these was a server hosted somewhere by someone, running a custom set of maps, rules, and quite often sound effects. You'd still get servers hosting the usual old diffuse maps and gameplay, but you'd find other things as well. You'd find strange close-knit communities having lengthy discussions about something irrelevant. There were weird and wonderful game modes that I never quite understood how to play, but enjoyed nonetheless, and often encountered maps that I'd only play once, but would remember for years to come. Now don't get me wrong, this custom stuff wasn't all good, in fact a lot of it was utter rubbish. Many custom servers can't seem to help but force you to download half a gigabyte of custom assets that you don't want. And even downloading all that stuff doesn't guarantee that you'll have a bug-free experience, or even one that works at all. I swear that some servers are utterly broken, but it doesn't stop them from being inhabited by dozens of people who seem perfectly content with whatever broken or user-unfriendly map they may be currently hosting. I would run into power-hungry admins who would ban anybody who killed them. I once found myself in a clutch situation and the admin triggered a deafening jump-scare sound which made me jump out of my skin. <coughs> Another time my clan was winning a 2v2 match, so the other team changed our names and unbound all of our controls until we disconnected and forfeited that game. So it wasn't all good. There are definitely benefits to CSGO's more fixed, more regulated Valve run servers instead. It's nice to be automatically teamed up and to be put in a balanced and competitive match whenever you feel like it. And you know what to expect when you join a game of CSGO from its fixed list of maps and game modes. But the game has lost part of its soul in the process. It's lost that community feel where you frequently run into the same players time and time again. Third-party services offer this back to some degree, and the custom server browser is still in CSGO. You have to click play, community server browser, and click OK here and you'll find it. But let's be honest, nobody bothers with it, do they? Luckily, CSGO has slowly but surely added official support for many of the custom game modes it was known for in the past. Every time an operation rolls around, we seem to be given more ways of playing the game. Let's take a look at some of the game modes for CSGO that are yet to be officially supported. Surf mode needs no introduction but I'll do it anyway. This game mode exploits one of Counter-Strike's movement quirks. If you land on a steep slope, you'll slide down it, but press the button facing towards the surface and you'll slide along it instead. This was discovered long, long ago, and since then the surf game mode has gained increasingly advanced and beautiful looking maps for players to surf along. For the most part, it's a relaxed game mode, pitting you against yourself as you get further and further along the course with every try. There are some incredible videos of highly talented surfers who master a particular course, shaving tenths of a second off until they obtain the new world record time. And there are other surf servers which end with teleports and weapons which allow you to destroy anybody left in the start zone. Bunny hop. If you jump the moment you hit the ground in Counter-Strike, you can sometimes pull off a bunny hop, which speeds you up beyond the limits of your normal running speed. You could use this in older Counter-Strike games to speed across a map, reaching areas long before you should have been able to. It's still possible to do in CSGO, but it's been heavily nerfed to the point where no player can really use it to get a speed advantage anymore. Apart from Frankie. But bunny hop mode does away with this limitation. All you have to do is to hold down jump and you'll bounce up and down, accumulating more and more speed and mass every time. It's exhilarating to do, and much like Surf, this mode has also gained a large number of custom maps and servers dedicated around this mechanic. Most quickly become insanely difficult for new players to pull off, but it's fun to try nonetheless. KZ, or climb maps, are also about jumping from one platform to another, but whereas bunny hop mode is all about building up lots of speed and frantically steering your mouse about so that you don't miss the platform you're aiming for, KZ, or climb maps, are much slower paced. They don't tend to have auto bunny hop enabled, since their focus is more about pulling off pixel perfect jumps in order to reach the next platform. Subtle difference, but they feel very different in practice. I still think this is witchcraft, and I can't even achieve the easier of these long distance jumps that veterans of this game mode can seemingly pull off every time. Some servers have a saving feature so you don't have to start all over again the moment you make a single mistake, but even these can quickly get seriously difficult, requiring absolutely perfect positioning, air strafing, and timing. VIP mode. Protect the VIP team. I talked recently about the battle between hostage and defuse mode in Counter-Strike's early days, but there was a third game mode too. This one turned one of the CTs into a VIP every round, and the goal was to get this person to the extraction zone without the terrorists killing him. The VIP was armed with just a pistol and with limited ammo, and no helmet of any sort, making him extremely vulnerable. 
Now I don't know how this game mode would hold up if played by today's experienced players, but it was a bit of fun back then. Prop Hunt is by far the best game mode ever made, ever. You become an item in the level and must hide from players. So if you're a cup, you'll hide on a desk in the hope that players won't notice that there isn't normally a cup there. Every time players shoot, they lose a bit of health, so they have limited chances to be able to find you. What's great is when a prop is finally found and it makes a run for it, leading to lots of terrorists shooting at a telephone as it races across the level for its life. Like I said, it is quite literally the best game mode ever. Zombie. There are two zombie modes. The first is zombie mode, where everybody runs off and hides in a corner in the hope that the zombies won't get to them. A few seconds after the game begins, one of the players at random becomes a zombie. It is equipped only with a knife, but has thousands of HP, and anybody they knife will also become a zombie with thousands of HP. This was super fun to play with friends, as you blocked off doorways with furniture in the hope that the ever-increasing numbers of zombies outside never discovered your location. <laughs> But these days, it seems like the zombie escape game mode is the more popular of the two, which is more about running through an assault course, being chased by zombie players, with the goal being to escape the map. I mean, I'm sure it's still fun, but it's not what I'm used to from this game mode, so I can't really say that I've ever taken to it as fondly as the one that I was used to playing from Source. Stop bee hopping. What the f are you doing? Kill him. Just f kill him. F you. Prison mode is weird, and I'm sure it's been the gateway to all sorts of kinky stuff. CTs are the jail wardens, and the terrorists are prisoners, and CTs get them to go to places in the level and to perform stuff. And if the terrorists disobey, then they get shot. I think the terrorists have to escape when nobody's looking, but when I've played this game mode it seems like they're all happy obeying whatever they're told to do, and I eventually lose interest and leave. But this game mode is definitely something. 1v1 arena mode. This is something that CSGO has done a disservice to. Now it has put 1v1 arenas in the warm-up period for a match, so you might think that you know about this game mode already. But you don't, because it doesn't represent what this game mode is about. If you join a custom server with this game mode on, you'll be put into one of maybe a dozen 1v1s which are carried out at the same time. The winners of these go up a tier and the losers go down one. What you're left with is a leaderboard where the best players are all battling it out to reach and to remain at the highest tier 1 level, while the worst players sink to the bottom and are just there to be beaten by new players joining the servers before they can begin to climb up the leaderboard. So it's a really fun, fast-paced affair that primes you for 1v1 battles in other game modes. From my experience, the communities in this game mode are all really friendly, and you get to know everybody well before the map changes, at which point the whole thing starts again on the next arena. So I can definitely recommend trying out 1v1 mode for real. And of course, there's the Red Bull Flick game mode, which I covered in a video the other day. You can check it out here. This is a 2v2 team deathmatch game mode about controlling the active capture point. What makes this one special is that Red Bull is currently in the process of hosting a large and very professional tournament for it. So it's kind of like what happens if CSGO's competitive side was mixed with a custom game mode and maps. There are prizes to be won, and it's not too late to take part, so check out the video for it just here. The goal of this video isn't to be an exhaustive list of every custom game mode Counter-Strike is home to. Just think of this as but a taste of the weird and wonderful modes that you might discover if you dare venture out of your comfort zone and into the custom server browser for Counter-Strike. I believe hiding this behind a few extra clicks has made the custom community a lot smaller than it could have been, but in making this video, I've been impressed by just how alive both the Counter-Strike Source and CSGO custom server communities are still. It isn't long before I feel part of something more intimate and personal than I'm used to from the experience delivered from more conventional game modes and servers. So why not give it a go and see what you discover? And I'll put my own surf map on my servers if you want an easy place to start. Yo! I won't be ready for that filler. <laughs> nah, I nah, you can't be full bro. Yo, a big YouTuber, a million subs, surfing nah, with no the default noise.